Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the four hour chart of Bitcoin from Mt. Gox on ClarkMoody.com. Now we had the big news last night. We're going to get into that story a little bit. The People's Bank of China issued a policy on Bitcoin. And you can see the sell off that happened. We're going to look at Bitcoin wisdom to get into more detail. But the sell off happened, and we've now got, as far as market depth, about 25,000 total. Bitcoin's offered. That's one of the larger figures we've seen in a while. And there's a, a decent amount of coins at about 12, 25 to 1250. We're talking about an extra three or 4,000 coming on. So there is going to be significant overhead resistance up above the market. Now, there were a couple of pennant formations I pointed out. This first one here, you can see it resolved to the downside. And then there's a larger pennant that formed that also resolved down. So, but we're still building. So let's get over to Bitcoin Wisdom. Take a look at the chart here. Now, the first thing I want to point out to you, we've got the major exchanges here. We're looking at Mt. Gox. And then the one that we'll see in the Zero Hedge article is BTC China. And you can see that sell-off that occurred. It was during the 315 time frame. And if we look at BTC China, we've got the same thing at 315. Uh, actually, that's 3 o'clock, so a little bit of a jump. The biggest jump before the market possible front running was something I covered last night on the blog is this selling here this selling actually came in at BTC dash E significantly ahead of the Chinese news story and you can see we're selling off pretty strongly right now after a rally all the way back so somebody apparently front run this announcement and what's interesting it wasn't on BTC China was actually on BTCE which is in my understanding is in Bulgaria so that's very interesting in and of itself but let's look at the story from Zero Hedge before I do that I want to look at another story from Zero Hedge and this is Alan Greenspan yes that's right Mr. Magoo uh, responsible for some of the largest bubbles in history is saying that Bitcoin is a bubble. It's interesting that this is one bubble that uh, he can recognize. He apparently couldn't recognize the others, but he can recognize this one. And this is a quote, in order for currencies to be exchangeable, they have to be backed by something. So here's the tired argument that we hear again and again. And of course, the question one always must ask when anybody says what is Bitcoin backed by then you should immediately ask them what's gold backed by and of course they're not going to have any answer and the next quote Greenspan says when we were on the gold standard currencies had intrinsic value which made people willing to exchange their goods and services with no question Alternatively, when we went into currencies, it was the backing of the issuer of the currencies whose great credit standing meant his checks could circulate as money. So it turns out actually that money, and that's gold, and I'm going to argue Bitcoin as well, doesn't need any backing. What needs backing is currency, and that's because it's essentially worthless. Bitcoin is not worthless. Bitcoin, the currency, and Bitcoin, of course, the payment network, is anything but worthless. We're still trying to determine what it is actually worth, and that's for the market to work out. So, Alan Greenspan, this is the gentleman who, right before housing collapsed, encouraged people to switch out of their 30-year fixed-rate mortgages and go into adjustable rate mortgages right before the collapse. So if we have Alan Greenspan against Bitcoin, then that's a very, very good thing. Now, 
let's get over to the story, other story from Zero Hedge, and that is, I'm sorry, let me find it here that Bitcoin tumbles after China central bank bans financial companies from using the digital currency. I'll read a little bit. As we said back in March when Bitcoin's parabolic rise first started, it was only a matter of time before first one, then all the central banks take on Bitcoin for the simple fact that it presents too great a threat to the fiat system. Well, that's interesting because we've had people saying oh it's a failure it's a Ponzi scheme it's a bubble and yet the central banks seem to find need to respond to it hmm that's interesting sure enough on the chart below of BTC China it's quite clear just as what at what point overnight the People's Bank of China announced that Bitcoin is simply a virtual commodity and isn't a currency with any real meaning and that officially bans financial companies from Bitcoin transactions. Now, the initial reading of that news was that Bitcoin is banned in China. Of course, that's not what it said. And what happened was Bitcoin was pretty much placed into the same category as silver and gold. In other words, it's not considered something that the government is going to guarantee one way or the other just as they don't do with silver and gold it's considered a commodity so they're hands off and here's a quote we have clearly stipulated that at the present moment all financial institutions and payment institutions cannot develop any businesses related to Bitcoin the central bank said and here's the loophole Quote, although there are people calling it a currency, it is not issued by the monetary authority. It does not possess the attributes of a currency, such as legal payment, legal repayment, and enforcement abilities, the central bank said in a statement explaining the notice. So there you have it. Basically, the People's Bank of China has said, if you want to play with Bitcoin, you can play with Bitcoin, but we are not going to use our legal authority to come in and enforce the transactions that occur, and we're not going to let the financial companies that have the official sanction of the government be involved with this. So in my opinion, that's actually very bullish. If you remember the recent news with that uh, sheep online that blew up that was about a hundred million dollars possibly some are estimating as high as a hundred million dollars of bitcoins that evaporated the big story is that someone on reddit and others are tracking this wallet and and then there's other rumors that there's a hit on this person who stole it but I think the most important thing we can take away from this is that with this thing happening in China and with that happening with that sheep exchange that people are going to have to do their own due diligence they're going to have to do their own security they're going to have to have their own two-factor authentication they're actually going to have to protect themselves they can't be lazy they can't expect somebody to come and rescue them if their bitcoins are stolen they're stolen if they send a transaction and the other person doesn't meet that obligation there's not going to be any legal recourse so that in my opinion is a good thing that's actually very bullish for bitcoin because i believe that the less the governments are involved with bitcoin the better now we'll see if the market agrees with me we're in another correction phase here and we'll see if we've put in a double top or not you can see on the 30 minute chart actually we need to go out to the one hour you can see that double top comes in at about 1200 1100 here actually this is uh, BTC dash E so let's go to Mt. Gox you can see that at about 1240 or so we get the double top and that's going to be the key overhead resistance and then of course we've got support all the way down at around 850 so one of those is going to be tested 
I believe fairly soon because Bitcoin is moving very very fast so whether this is a double top or not we're gonna know that I believe we're gonna know that within the next few days so let's go over to another story more Bitcoin FUD and this is a big flashy story from storm clouds gathering if you're not familiar with storm clouds gathering he's one of the doom and gloom conspiracy type youtubers out there you can see he's got 271,000 subscribers and quite a few views on this already and a big splashy headline Bitcoin what you're not being told so we've got to watch this this is a big conspiracy well I'm, I'm not gonna watch it because he really only makes one point in this and the fatal flaw that he talks about that Bitcoin supposedly has is the size of the blockchain now I went and did a search on my computer on my Bitcoin client and I found the size of the blockchain on my computer came in at around well actually it was the folder itself came in around 13 gigs you can see on this chart from blockchain.info that uh, this is in MBs that's megabytes so you have to convert it to gigs thousand megs is a gig so we're talking about 12 gigs is the size of the current 12 to 13 gigs is the size of the current blockchain and his argument is that it's rising so rapidly that there isn't going to be enough space for people's computers to have it because it's the entire ledger from the very beginning he discusses the issue of these super nodes coming out and some of the solutions that are being talked about now it's going to be my contention that all of that is just a big waste of time and I'm gonna to try to prove that to you first I want you to look at the logarithmic scale uh, I'm sorry I want you to look at the this is the linear scale I'm sorry this is the logarithmic scale we were looking at the linear scale when we look at the logarithmic scale you can see that this goes up in uh, that logarithmic factor now this here 10 that's 10 gigs this amount here is one terabyte so we're talking about the blockchain getting to one terabyte now let's look at a couple of the comments here on this YouTube I think they summarize it fairly well The first one here is from one Schwarzer bar. I believe that the blockchain size itself is only a problem in the long term because assuming exponential growth, it's still 10 years until the blockchain is at one terabyte. Okay, so one terabyte, if we go back to the blockchain chart, this up here is one terabyte. And you can see that at the rate we're approaching that it's going to be a long time before we reach one terabyte now let's look at some news but before we do that let's look at Moore's law Moore's law is actually a law about transistors and integrated circuits but we find that Moore's law tells us that at least this is historically has been the case up until now that the number of transistors on integrated circuits doubles approximately every two years in other words computing power doubles approximately every two years now they're arguing in this that that's actually going to end but has not ended yet and uh, people have argued for a long time that it's going to end and then new discoveries come out although this trend has continued for more than half a century Moore's law should be considered an observation or conjecture not a physical or natural law sources in 2005 expected it to continue until at least 2015 or 2020 however the 2010 update to the international technology roadmap for semiconductors has growth slowing at the end of 2013 so 
we're going to find out if Moore's Law is violated. Uh, then they predict that it's going to double every three years. So let's look at a chart here very similar to Moore's Law. This is hard drive capacity. You can see that it's quoted in gigabytes. So there's 10 gigs. Your normal drives now are about 100 gigs. Those were available back in 2005. You can see that a terabyte size drive was available back in 2010. And just to show you that this is continuing, this is an article from Computer World. It came out in May of 2012. 60 terabyte drives could be a reality in 2016. So Seagate is one of the major hard drive makers. They have a ton of patents and everything else. Seagate has already said it will be able to produce a 60 terabyte 3.5 inch hard drive by 2016. Laptop drives should reach 10 terabytes to 20 terabytes in the same time frame. So we're talking about a 20 terabyte laptop hard drive and here is the blockchain approaching just one terabyte. So a big non-issue, more FUD, more people trying to uh, make a lot of hay out of Bitcoin and all of the tragedy that's going to occur. But the reality is that that's a non-issue. There are a lot of other issues out there, and that is one of the non-issues, but someone's trying to make hay out of it. So back to the chart, what we're waiting for is a confirmation of whether or not this Chinese news is significant. I personally believe that this Chinese news is bullish and that this test at about 900 is going to stand. It's going to be valid. Now, if I'm wrong, we will see a double top rollover in Bitcoin. And that's actually going to be, if you look back at the historical price action in Bitcoin, that's going to be a historical first because that's never happened before. Every top that we've had, interim top that we've had in Bitcoin has been a type of price spike such as this spike here, or we can go all the way back to the $30 price spike, but you can't see it on this chart. So that will be a first if we get some kind of double top. I personally do not believe we're going to get that double top. I do not believe that the top is in yet. I believe there's going to be another test, and this is going to form up to be another pennant, and we're gonna test that 1250 and probably break out. I'm still predicting a breakout towards that $3,000 high, and we'll talk to you next time.